All right, today we are going to be continuing on with our multiplying decimals. So Tuesday, we talked about multiplying a decimal and a whole number, or finding the products, the answer to a multiplication problem, of a decimal and a whole number. A decimal being a number that's less than one, a whole number being one or greater. Um, so we're going to be multiplying still decimals and whole numbers. The only difference on Tuesday is that we used models. We used the hundredths grids to help us see why our answer was our answer. Today we're not doing that. Today we're just going straight to it. We're solving it. We're using the strategies that we talked about on Tuesday to help us solve these. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me choose a color here. I'm going to go with purple. All right, so I've got three problems here and we're going to work through these. So I have nine and eight tenths times two. So first I want to estimate because that's going to help me figure out where to place my decimal. So I know that 9 and 8 tenths is really close to 10. I'm going to keep 2 the same. So I know that my answer should be close to 20. It's probably going to be a little less because I rounded 9 and 8 tenths up. So remember the first thing. We said the first step was to ignore your decimal. Act like it's not there. And then you're going to multiply. So ignore your decimal. So I'm going to pretend this isn't here and I'm just going to multiply like I normally would. 2 times 8 is 16, carry my 1. 2 times 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19. So I ignore my decimal, I multiply, and then step 3 is to add your decimal back. So we've got to figure out, we've got a couple of ways that we can figure out. So what we noticed the other day when we were doing models was that whenever my number ended it, like one of my factors was in the tenths place, my answer also ended in the tenths place. So I can use that strategy, say okay, tenths, my answer needs to say tenths. Or I can say, well, I did my estimate, my answer needs to be close to 20. So if I were to put my decimal here, 196 is not close to 20, so I know that it wouldn't belong there. If I were to put my decimal here, 1 and 96 hundredths, that's not close to 20. So I know it wouldn't belong here, but if I put my decimal here, 19 and 6 tenths, that's really close to 20. If I was thinking money, that's only 40 cents away from money, four dimes away from money. So I used my strategy of estimation, but I can also say, okay, well, my factor was in tenths. My product ends in tenths. So 19 and 6 tenths is likely the right answer, unless I made a silly multiplication mistake. All right, let's try the next one. So I have 34 times 5 and 3 tenths. So I'm going to round 5 and 3 tenths to 5. I'm going to turn 34 to 30. 3 times 5 is 15 and my 0. So my answer should be about 150, roughly 150. Probably a little higher because I rounded down. So I'm going to have some extras on my real answer. So step one, ignore the decimal. Pretend this decimal's not there. Three times four is 12, carry my one. Three times three is nine, plus one is 10. So I'm gonna mark that off so I don't accidentally add it later. Five times four is, well, what did I forget to do? I'm moving to my tens, or the next place value, my tens place, because I'm ignoring this. So I have to put a zero there because I'm going to my next place value. Five times four is 20, carry my two. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Now I'm going to add these up. 2, 0, 8, 1. Now I know my answer needs to be around 150, and I also know that it needs to end in the tenths place because my product or my factor was in the tenths place. So if I do that, if I say, okay, the tenths place means there's only one number behind the decimal. So I'm going to place it where there's only one number behind the decimal. 180 and 2 tenths. Is 180 close to 150? It is. So that would be, I, I check it with my place value and I check it with my estimation. So I should be good. The last practice. All right, so I have 6 tenths times 15. So I'm going to ignore my decimal. I, well, it's first round. I know that 6 tenths is close to 1. I'm going to keep 15 the same. So my answer should be close to 15. It's probably going to be a little lower because I added some extra in there when I rounded up to 1. But when I go to multiply this, 
if I ignore this decimal, it means I'm ignoring the zero. And I don't like having my larger factor on the bottom. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this as 15 times 6 tenths because that commutative property tells me I can switch my factors around and still get the same product. So I can that commutative property says, hey, you can take two factors, switch them around, and it still equals the same thing. So I have 15 times 6 tenths, but I'm gonna ignore my decimal. So 6 times 5 is 30. Carry my 3. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. When I multiply by 0, I know I get 0, so I don't need to do anything there. So I have 90. Well, now I have to add my decimal back in. So I know my answer has to be close to 15. I know it should end in the 0 spot. So if I place my decimal in the 0 spot, in the 10th place, if I place my decimal here, I don't have any numbers behind, so there's no tenths, and 90 is not close to 15. In fact, I know my answer should be less than 15 because I rounded up here. If I place my decimal here, I have 9 and 0 tenths, tenths, and 9 is less than 15 but still relatively close. So my final answer would be 9. Now remember, I can also write it like this, but I don't ever want to take that off until I'm certain that's my answer. Because if I would have erased the zero first, if I would have thought, oh, hey, I know I don't need a zero after the decimal, so my number, my decimal goes here and only erase the zero, nine tenths is not close to 15. And when you multiplied 15 times six, you didn't get nine, you got 90. So don't erase that zero until after you are certain that that is where your decimal belongs then you can erase it. So nine and zero tenths is the same as nine. So that's what you're gonna to practice today, multiplying decimals by whole numbers. Um, I will see groups A, B, C, and D in small group. If you need some extra help, feel free to join any of the small groups. Um, that's all, see you guys later.